Well, hello and happy Thursday, everybody. Welcome to Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, the inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And we're trying a new format out because after the last two episodes, I felt like I could have done a better job. And after a lot of reflection, I have come up with a new idea for the show. I hope that you guys are pleased when you find out that I will actually be completing more things this way. And in this episode, we have Easter just around the corner. And what a nice thing to look forward to. I love all the colors that are involved with Easter. This is a good time to get out your solids. This pattern is going to be available at creativefeet.com in its entirety from start to finish. And the project includes piecing and binding and a couple different applique techniques. In addition to that, a little couching with yarn. Quite a fun project. And the pattern is going to include your ability to make little mug rugs, a full-size placemat, or take it up to a centerpiece for your Easter table. Hello, Tina. Hello, Madeline. Amy, better days. Welcome. And somebody's got a congratulation coming to him. Hi, Ellen. I hope your hair looks good. And let's see. I don't know what your name is, Country Silkworm. Oh, you're Lynn. Hi, Lynn. I got to learn that. Welcome. How is it in Alaska, in Australia today? tonight, this morning. <laughs> Hello, Linda. Thanks for waiting. Linda, Wendy's, you were here before the show started. I appreciate all of you so much. And I'm really excited because part of my frustration has been that I really feel like I'm not giving enough to the school. And this entire pattern and video will be included in the VIP group. For those of you who are in the VIP group, yay, you're going to start getting more. So if you're part of the VIP group, this is just one thing that you're going to get as each week I'm going to be going live. Sometimes I'll be filming and I'll be uploading the video to YouTube following it. So kind of like what you're going to do, what you're getting on Fabrically Speaking Live now is a sneak peek into the project I'm filming and I'm going to edit it so that I don't have a lot of yak 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 in the middle of a lesson and I can still enjoy interacting with each of you each Thursday but I'm going to keep the full length two hour sessions for inside the school as free chats with you guys instead of having Thursday be two hours or longer of me fiddling around trying to move cameras around to get the best angle. And uh, I think over time, you'll all be glad that I made this change. But know that I'm going to be a little bit awkward as I figure it all out. But it's all to keep making things for you guys and helping you expand in your sewing, quilting and embroidery adventure. I had a lot of fun going to the store and buying Easter prints. And one of them I really liked was this polka dot because it involved all the different colors that I was able to find then in a solid. So I'm thinking that I'll probably use this as the binding to go around the project. And this is the project. So basically you're gonna be piecing strips to make the background. Hello, Sheila from Southern California. I haven't broken any. No, I did not break a needle, Amy. <laughs> so some of this is, would be very challenging to do in a traditional applique format. This little line here would be too skinny for fabric, wouldn't it? So my plan is to use yarn for that. And we'll use the sequins and ribbon foot for that. And I have, as you can see here, the bunny in different sizes. So you'll be able to print it out bigger and smaller for your mug rug. Isn't that a cute little mug rug? Wouldn't the kids just love to have that to uh, 
maybe eat their lunch on Easter. So these will all be available within the pattern that you buy. You're gonna, they'll be printed out different sizes. And inside of the VIP group, you'll have the ability to print these yourself in different sizes. Tell me what you think. Do you think this is a good idea? Give me a thumbs up if you do. So this, I was also thinking, maybe not having pink be down at the bottom, but green down the bottom in that look so that it kind of looks like grass. And I don't have to just use solids. We can use batiks, do whatever we want. Thumbs up. I know some of you are going to go, I don't know if I like this. I liked everything free. I liked it when Claire just spent six hours on live with us. And uh, I understand. I like, I like free stuff too. So we'll still do free stuff. This Saturday is the VIP Saturday. Whatever you want to sew Saturday, you can, I hope you're coming up with ideas of things that you'd like me to do. I love it when you challenge me. It is going to be a gorgeous day here in Arizona. The first day off for me in a long time where the weather was on my side. So I'm probably going to keep it tight to one hour or no longer. Any of you have your list for the VIP live? And those of you who didn't succeed at coming into the zoom chat last week last saturday make sure that you create an account at zoom.com even if you don't intend on ever doing your own zoom chats and remember you're always joining a live not what's the other word they use you're not a launcher you're not launching a zoom you are joining in on my Zoom chat. So these are the reasons some of you were unable to come in to the live chat last time. It was our first time. We'll do it again. And probably at least once a month, I'll pop in or send you all an invitation to join the, uh, sorry, someone just tried to call, to join in for the Zoom chats. If you have ever had any difficulty doing anything in sewing, quilting, and embroidery, start writing those things down and send me that in emails or through the school. You can send me direct messages inside of the school by typing Claire into the search in the school. And, and then my picture comes up with a circle and you just click on the circle and you can, they have this thing saying, say hi. So you say hi and in there you can type anything that you want to tell me privately so that the entire school doesn't find out. Know that when I am live, I do not watch what's going on in the school. So that, so if you are trying to tell me something now, I can't see it till after the live is over. I just, I can't separate my brain that much. So one of the first things I'm going to do for this pattern is I'm going to choose my fabrics and cut my strips and try to plot how big of a, an item I want to do. And I, I may film more than one size. That would be fun. So now my mind is, is doing what it normally does. Hi, Madeline. Hi, Allison. Sewing with trifocals. Hopefully I can remember all of your guys' other names. I don't know. I think this is just so awesome that maybe I'll use it as the back too. Or maybe make some napkins. <gasps> That's a good idea. I could do a little bonus napkin to go along with it. I can do anything. I just need you guys to go, yeah, do that. So what happens now on Thursday is I go live with you for about a half an hour and then I'm going to continue filming. And I already started filming before I went live today. So I have begun the educational video. And after I say bye to you guys, I will continue in here and film and complete the project. 
and then I will upload it and make it available. So isn't that better? And and Amy, you won't be able to count my broken needles. I probably won't have as many because I'll have my brain focused. So for your benefit right now, I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, choose the colors that I'm going to use. I definitely have decided on green. And I, I, I always like to make really big things to go on my table. Kind of like the idea of seeing the bunny and having maybe more fabric above it. So you can play around with this and the background is really entirely up to you how big you make the, what looked to me kind of like the sky going into the sun, the, the sunrise of Easter. However, you can also see this pattern as maybe a wood fence that is behind the bunny. So it's really up to you what you do. You could do browns. You don't have to do the all pastel. Finally found the thumbs up, Linda. All right. So I'm definitely going to use this blue. And I'm going to iron them all, make them all spray starched should wash and, and dry these and really always if you're gonna if you want to really make sure you're being the healthiest possible you should always wash your fabrics before you start handling them because the chemicals they use to dye fabrics aren't necessarily the best for you i can't throw things like this away i'm like one day I'll use this for something. Do any of you have a bunch of fat quarter cardboards that you, you saved and you don't know what to do with? You don't know where the thumbs up is? If you look at the bottom in the chat, you'll see a gray smiley face. And if you click on the gray smiley face, there's a bunch of emoto or what are they, whatever they're called, <laughs> faces and hearts and flowers. And, and then to the right of that, you'll see a dollar sign, and that is how you can donate to our YouTube channel, help us to perfect and finance all the stuff that I do for you. Help me to provide more free content, because there will still be free content on my YouTube channel. You can do a super chat. You can give me love during the show as well. I try to keep my eye on it. So what's that nasty look, Amy? What is that for? That I am not going to be on two hours every Thursday? Sorry, I can't be everything to everybody. I try. So. One, two, three, four... And in this pattern, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different colors. There we go. And definitely easier to have your fabric a little bit damp when pressing out creases. One of the things that I use to make creases come out easier is a little bit of vinegar in water, in a water bottle. And I spray my fabric with that before ironing and it makes it so that the creases come out easier. But I don't have that bottle close enough. I see it across the room. Good old steam. So since I bought fat quarters and not yardage, it is going to limit how big I can make my bunny pattern. Unless I do a border around it. Ah, that would be a use for the polka dots, wouldn't it? There we go. Uh, 
I don't have the chat. I'm like, what's something's missing on the screen in front of me? That's right. I haven't asked you guys yet. What is on your sewing table? You're working on a dinosaur train quilt. So I'm going to tell you some of the patterns I want to do. I, I want to make a pattern for little boys and girls that like to play with cars. I was a little girl that loved to play with cars. Are you guys surprised? <laughs> I used to get out in the street and find dirt and get it wet and create little towns in the mud. I, was, I wasn't the little girl in dresses, that's for sure. And uh, so I think it would be really neat to make blankets that you can lay on the floor so or quilts so it's comfortable and have it be an activity for little ones to play with and also I think that would be something nice to send to the children any children that you may want to donate for so that they have something cozy to lay on and something fun to do while laying on it so that's something that will be coming up If you spray starch your fabrics, they will tend, they won't tend to stretch when you sew them together. And if you use our liquid-based glue to glue the strips together first, then there's less of a chance of slippage as well. And the fabric is then locked to the other fabric and the bias or the, the give in the fabric is gone. It's eliminated by the glue because the glue is not glue, it's water-soluble stabilizer. So it's like, brushing on water soluble stabilizer onto your fabric which doesn't stretch once it dries and stops the fabric from stretching so if you've ever done lots of strips this is a great jelly roll project if you have a solid jelly roll I think I do I actually do I didn't need to buy all these <gasps> that means I can make it as long as I want by the way see it in the corner right over there that jelly roll you played with your brother's trucks. They hated it. <laughs> it was funny. I had a really nice talk with my 92 year old father, who's about to turn 93 in May. In case you, any of you are wondering about how my daughter, my daughter, my dad is doing my father. He, uh, he and I just had a really nice talk and we went, we took a little walk down memory lane and, uh, I confessed to him that I didn't take responsibility for taking the tension assembly apart on my mom's sewing machine when I was a little girl. I couldn't put it back together and they blamed it on my brother, Robert. But I had the tendency of invention and so did my brother, Robert. I need more colors. Let's see. trying to see where I bought this because I do I do also plan to have kits available for patterns that I come up with so that you can duplicate what I make I think I picked this up at Joann's though this would be perfect for this project see that instead of solids they're have that hand dyed look to them but this would be perfect for this and then you don't have to worry about cutting and however big your strips sewn together end up being is how big your placemat is and then it's where you place your bunny or which size bunny you choose. How nice that you donate quilts for the children's hospitals. This would be, that would be a great thing. So an activity quilt. Another idea that I have is fiddle quilts for people that, well, there's different conditions that people have where they need to fiddle with things. It helps to calm people down. In, uh, so lots of things. I, there's so many. You would think I'd run out of ideas, but I don't. I just run out of time. So this is me trying to be more efficient. As when I film with the three cameras and my cell phone it, as an additional camera, when I'm not live, I can do that and give you 
the angle that you need to see the front view, the focus on the needle that I, I can't achieve without being not live. So you're going to get much better camera angles as well. So I think I'll, I'll sew a couple strips together. And I'm going to use these. Show you how I can sew, sew my quarter inch seam allowance on. Ooh, isn't this nice? You know, the nice thing about doing this is the bunny, because the bunny is going to be white, will show up more if your colors are more intense. If they're too soft of a pastel, then the bunny will kind of fade into the background. So to sew all these strips together to create the background for the pattern, I am going to use the satin edge foot for that. And every week on Thursday, I'm going to talk about one of your questions because I get calls and I get emails every week from people that are having a problem or have a question. One of the questions I had this week was what size zipper do, should you use for, the, for a zipper bag? And it's the pattern that I did with the frogs on it in the playlist, the Creative Notions playlist on my YouTube channel. And that zipper was smaller than the bag. I watched the video again because I couldn't remember what I had done. So if you're watching, I can't, rem I can't remember your name. Sorry about that. It was an email question this morning. This pattern is actually mine. I drafted it, Teresa. I drew this today and before I went live. And... It will be available at creativefeet.com. Probably by Monday, it'll be available for purchase on there. And inside the VIP group, inside of my school, you'll be able to print it out. At the, as, as it is right now at creativefeet.com, we don't have downloadable anything. My son is resistant to do that, and uh, he's the he's in charge of my website. So he's like, you want to do something like that? Put it in your school. That way people aren't sharing your pattern, and you don't lose money on people taking advantage of or violating copyright. So the satin edge foot is the foot that I'm using now, and I didn't focus this camera yet. That's the liquid base glue. Okay, that should be better. So with the satin edge foot, it has a little wire. For those of you who are watching for the first time, this is my satin edge foot and I designed it for a woman born blind and deaf. And it has this guide that moves by you turning this little thumb adjusting nut. And inside the opening is that wire. And the wire is what determines how far away you sew from the needle. So if you want to sew eighth inch seam allowances, you would have the guide wire an eighth of an inch away from your needle. In order to achieve a quarter inch, your sewing machine must have a left needle position. And you take a measuring tape and place it beneath the sewing machine needle Sorry, I dropped my fabric all slid on the floor. So you ordered the Bernina adapter. That's what you're talking about. Isn't it nice to be able to? One, one of the nicest things about the satin edge foot is it's the equivalent of 27 feet. So it's one foot doing 27 things instead of 27 feet that you have to buy individually and try to remember what to do with each one. Lower the needle, not all the way in, just so that it's just hovering over one of the lines and then you place the, the needle so it is right over that line and then move the guide wire over to the quarter inch mark. 
if a pattern calls for a scant quarter inch, there is no such thing as a scant quarter inch. It is a mathematical measurement that has a silly little name that makes you wonder what is a scant quarter inch, right? How, raise your hand if you have thought, what the heck is a scant quarter inch? I, if I need it, if it has its own name, if it's that important, there, there needs to be a scant quarter inch foot out there and there isn't because it isn't real. It is a smaller than quarter inch design or seam allowance. And generally when you're told to use a scant quarter inch, they give you a illustration of it because it doesn't exist. So let me help you understand that better. You have your solid line representing the fabric. And then this is the seam allowance. And that's not a quarter inch. It's a little bit, it's giant because I'm using a camera that's focused in really big. So you can see where it comes out. I'll flip it this way. No, that's the right way. So the needle is on the, that is a perfect quarter inch. I just drew a perfect quarter inch. So if I want a scant quarter inch, all it is is a little bit smaller and they determine the size of that because it's not a real thing. So it, it's just gonna be smaller, smaller spacing between the stitching line and the fabric's edge. And this foot, because it's adjustable, is a scant quarter inch foot as well. So you would just take their pattern and place it underneath the sewing machine needle, lower your needle on their stitching line, lower the foot, and then we just turn the nut, moving the guide over to what they consider a quarter inch seam allowance or a scant quarter inch. Yeah, Bernina feet are pricey, aren't they? <laughs> okay. So that's a scant quarter inch according to what I drew, which makes it real only to me and to you if I design a pattern that requires that. Then you take your fabric and place the guide off the edge. And that's just, it's really small, but I thought I'd show you anyway. So here we go. Hand up. You guys can't, can't click on that, huh? wonder if there's a shortcut. Do any of you know the keystroke for a, a raised hand? So if you look at the chat, the bottom of the chat, there's a grayed out smiley face. And I think they could do better. You can do anything. You can even send me a monkey like that. <laughs> We just push toward the foot and get the microphone out of the way. We push gently toward the foot instead of hand behind and hand in front and moving like this as you sew, you push toward the foot and gently, a gentle push, not a, not a real aggressive push. Notice that my hand is actually resting on the sewing machine. So I'm not lifting, I'm not raising my elbows, it's a much healthier way to sew. I'm gonna turn this iron off before it yells at me. That iron reminds me of driving in a car and you don't put your seatbelt on right away and your car starts beeping at you. That iron beeps at me a lot. So I rest my elbow on, this is my bolster pattern. It is one of the free patterns that's inside of the school. Create with Claire Rowley, found at create.clairowley.com. Push toward the foot and it pushes back the other way. So notice that I'm elbows, shoulders, everything is relaxed. And on my right hand, I have a scissor hold, which is, I think of my fingers as a scissor and I want to feel the fabric in between my two fingers with my uh, other arm resting on the table in front of the sewing machine. So this is a healthy way of sewing. You can sew for longer periods of time and you won't feel that fatigue and the muscles burning between your shoulder blades, which is a signal from your brain to stop doing what you're doing when you feel pain like that. And then you just 
rest pretty much. Try not to move anything and you're good to go and you can sew for long stretches of jelly rolls. Now if you have trouble with the fabric shifting on you like that and you don't want that to happen because you get a little bit spaced out sometimes and darn it now I gotta rip out that seam and then you can use our liquid base glue. Oh Amy a butterfly I like the butterfly. There's probably a shortcut or a uh, I forgot that I lost the pin I thought I had a pin in here. I have a bad habit of leaving the lid off my glue for a long period of time. So that's what happens and then I use a pin to clear the opening. It's not hard. It doesn't it's not a hard thing that's in there. It doesn't chemically change. It's water evaporation unlike other adhesives that you have purchased in the past where if you leave the lid off too long then the inside of the whole bottle slowly hardens and now you have a hard substance inside. Your monkey isn't purple? How funny. <laughs> That's such a funny thing to say. So how many monkeys do you have, Amy? Ah, you're raising your hand. Whoops. Okay, so that's too much glue in one spot. Remember, it's just water-soluble stabilizer. So little dots, dot, 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 dot. And then you just take your finger and slide across. And that's going to eliminate the fabric from shifting on you at all. And this is how the, the blind are able to sew more accurately. They can feel and sit down before they ever sew. And they can feel that those two edges are lined up with one another. Now they don't have to worry about the shifting in, in forward and back motion or side to side motion and nor do you if you do this. Just gentle push toward the foot and it pushes back the other way. So my girlfriend just, just tried to call. <laughs> I hung up on her, or I didn't take the call. This is elbows down, shoulders relaxed, and I didn't glue the whole thing, so I have to keep stopping, and I have to look. And I'm looking to make sure the fabric, those two fabrics stay together, that they don't shift. But outside of that, I don't, I don't have to look at this hand. I just gently push toward it, and the fabric feeds perfectly straight. You don't have any monkeys. You got to scroll down. So see how accurate this seam allowance is? I'll just keep sliding it. Perfect scant quarter inch seam allowance. Zoom, zoom, zoom. How many monkeys do you have in your house? Some people do have monkeys. I'll take it all the way to the bottom. This, fa this fabric, the whole jelly roll had a lot of, you know, frayed edges. So sometimes that frayed piece will get stuck on the foot. And so that's another reason to glue first. If that ever happens, then you don't have to worry about the fabric shifting if, they, if that frayed thread gets caught on something. Look at you guys. Now the chat looks more colorful with all your stuff. That's a lot more fun. And there we go. Of course, we also have our wonderful presser. So you don't have to turn on the iron until you're ready. So a lot of people think there's a debate as to whether or not you open your seams or not. That it's a choice that you make, but there's science to that, just as there's science to the needle and thread that you use and the science to whether or not you press your seams open versus press your seams to one side is if you want to stitch in a ditch, you need a ditch. So if you piece your fabrics together and you open them up, 
there's no ditch and you can wander from one piece of fabric to the other. So if you have your fabric folded over to one side, then the satin edge foot guide will feel the fabric edge and you can sew in a ditch really fast. I'll do the, a little bit of that for you and show you how that is. You love that one? This one, this presser is a one of a kind because I cooked the wood too long and it kind of burnt the, the dye in the wood. So if you would like to get this one, that's something that we can do in an email. You can say, give me the presser that you used on Thursday. Also, if you have any children, some of we have some that are too small for adult hands. So if you want to get one for a child, um, you can reach out to me in an email for that. I'm going to go ahead and continue pressing this over and show you how I do a lot, a long amount quickest. You have the Bernina 770. It's the BA100 adapter that you want under the products link and then supplies down. You scroll down the page and then you'll see the adapters. Stitching in a ditch is really hard if you don't have your fabrics folded over to one side. If you don't press your fabric right to begin with, that is also a reason that you'll have a hard time with it. A lot of times we just iron and we iron the fabric and we don't realize that the fabric isn't spread apart enough before we iron. So the way to eliminate any chance of having a false press was kind of what I call it. Let's see if I can show it on this camera. So you can press your fabric. First off, a good rule of thumb is to press dark colors or light colors to the dark side instead of dark to light because you're less likely to see a light color showing through a dark fabric. That doesn't always, it's not always convenient though. If you have one seam going one way, another seam going another way, and then you have your other pieces coming this direction and some go that way and some go that way, then what happens is you have to sew down, stop, because your ditch isn't going the same way as where you just drove down the road. And now you gotta, now all of a sudden your ditch is on the other side and you gotta switch to the other side. Well, you can do that with the satin edge foot pretty easy because all you do is move the guide over and then you can continue your path down. So whether or not the ditch is on your left side or your right side satin edge foot changes based on your positioning of that guide. Pretty cool, huh? So as I press, I press one way and while I'm doing it, I'm kind of kind of spreading the fabric out and I press to the side I'm not going to end up having it on and then I press to the side that I am going to have it on. Then you would flip it over and press on the top. And notice that I'm sliding the presser at a diagonal from the light side to the dark side. So that's that's how I do it with a presser. And honestly, I don't feel the need for an iron most of the time while I'm doing long pieces like this. Like a very strong child. I missed something. I probably said something and now I have no idea. I missed the joke. Ellen, your last name makes me want to drink my fruit juice. <laughs> this is actually vegetable juice. Or it's a, uh, there's some, what is that? Passion fruit. And then there's a whole bunch of red vegetables in it. All right, now I have a little sustenance on there. I'm currently doing a celery juice fast. If you're gonna buy this one, I'm gonna 
Not that I can damage it in any way by using it, but I'll switch and I'll put this one aside. Okay, so if I want the fabric ultimately to be on this side, then I press to the, the opposite side first and go all the way down. And the reason I do this rather than iron is because I have found that the iron folds the fabric more often than not. You can see how I'm just moving up. This is the cutter pillar pad is great for pressing against with a presser, not with an iron. If you want to press on top of your cutter pillar and you don't have a lot of space, you know that I do that all the time, that I have this little ironing board right here. But if you have the glass, I'm trying to find it. Hang on. Where did I put it? I kept kicking it with my toe, so I moved it. I don't know where I put it. But if you have tempered glass and you put it on top and the glass is another product available for your cutter pillar. It takes up half of one side. Then you can actually iron while seeing through. That's the feature of it. Okay, so now I'm going to press the light color to the dark side. Oh, you had a monkey. Now I understand. I've seen some videos of people dealing with their monkeys. <laughs> Every once in a while, I look at people with owls and think, how neat, because I have owls that visit me all the time. I'm like, it would be so cool to have an owl running around the house. Maybe not. Getting ready to stitch in a ditch. A lot of people have no idea what the heck that means. Pattern calls for it. And, and a, lot of pa a lot of people are, you're told to use a walking foot to do this. And a walking foot and stitch in a ditch is so hard. So if you have a difficult time doing that, know that it's simply not the right foot for stitching in a ditch. A walking foot pulls the fabric through, makes the fabric easy, move easier left to right. So that, we don't want that. We want to have something that keeps us right along the edge of the fabric that sits higher. So this is the ditch, just like a curb or a culvert, depending on where you live. So whoever came up with the term stitch in a ditch lived in an area that has that uses the term ditch for where the sidewalk is and the street is. So now I'm pressing it open, also known as setting your seam. So you press on the stitching side and then you set your seam on the outside edge. These are terms that you may hear and not know what they mean. This is something that you can do to hold a facing down on a garment as well. So think of this as a, as the sleeve and you would, you have a facing that you've sewn on and you can take and fold that over and now stitch in a ditch right along there and you'll have a top stitch on the outside and that facing can't flip out and start showing on the outside. And after this I'm going to stop and I'm going to say goodbye because I need to do the pattern in order to stay true to my new business plan. because I'm going to film the pattern without you watching. Not to hide anything, just to be more efficient and to get more patterns and projects out for you. So now what I do is I place my needle so that it is right 
in the ditch and you don't doesn't really matter what needle position you're in for this however I tend to just always go with I was trying to fold it to the wrong side and I'm like why isn't it working because it's not supposed to be on that side because I pressed that so good it would not it refused to press to the light side see how it's facing the dark so it's facing the dark side so I was trying to get the seam to go back over and it wouldn't go back over isn't that a nice thing so now I'm going to use a center needle position because I tend to do that and the guide itself you're going to position the guide so that it touches or the needle and the guide so they touch one another we'll bring the needle down first and it's in the ditch. Now I bring the guide over to the needle. The quilt itself will either, you'll either have all the bulk over here or you'll have all the bulk inside of the machine. Much easier to have the majority of the quilt out here rather than having it all balled up in here. The feature of this foot being able to use both sides of the guide makes it so that you can have all your quilt out here instead of having it in there. So you can work from the outside into the middle and then flip your quilt around and start from the outside and work to the middle. This foot isn't gonna cause your fabric to stretch. That is the material that I make our feet out of that stops your fabric from being spread apart when you're sewing. One of the neat features of it. Another thing is if you use the bamboo batting that we offer at Creative Feet, it's 100% bamboo. You don't wanna mix it with cotton and any other natural fiber because the cotton will rot away and you'll just be left with bamboo batting in the end anyway. So the bamboo batting stretches and it also has a really high static cling. It is what's holding the sunflower fabric there is just stuck on the batting that is stuck to the wall. So it's got really good static cling. So Susan, I, we had a ditch. Ditches were, were not right next to the curb. We had the curb and we called it the gutter. So I would, from where I was, from where I came from, I would call this stitching in the gutter <laughs> instead of stitching in a ditch. So I didn't use my glasses to set this up and I didn't finish setting it up. So my guide wasn't far enough over. Yellow thread on yellow fabric, hard to see. Then we gently push toward the foot from this side and it won't let you go too far in the opposite direction. It won't let you ride up on here. If you use a walking foot, you can tend to, it's like water skiing behind a boat and you, you can sway. So if you've ever felt like you were swerving, kind of like drunk driving, the walking foot is a drunk driving <laughs> experience. If you've ever felt out of control using one, go ahead and put your hand up and share it with everybody else because no doubt everybody's been through it. Notice this hand is in a stable position, gently pushing light touch toward that side of the foot. And then we have a perfect stitch in a ditch right along the edge of that fabric. And it works like that for garments and your quilts. So I know you'd probably like me to go ahead and finish the whole project live with you, but I have been following the stats and you guys do not stay in the videos when I run on and on and on. And uh, I get really tired and half of those things I never create full on good videos for. So this is the new format of Fabrically Speaking Live. And to answer your question on the zipper, Generally, when I make a zipper pouch, and I do have one here, let's see. I'm going to address at least one question every Thursday as well. So the person asked me about my frog zipper pouch, which I liked it and I took it out of here and I used that frog zipper pouch. So she wanted to know how big the zipper should be. It, it really depends if you're going to follow that pattern and that is my zipper pouch pattern 
project inside of the playlist in my YouTube channel. That's a mouthful. And it's called uh, Frog Zipper Pouch, I think is what I called it. But inside the playlist, Creative Notions, inside of my channel, and you'll find it there. And in that pattern, I had a zipper, and it was really hard to find a zipper that matched this fabric because there's this really unusual green zipper, and it was short. It was too short for the bag, so I show how to make the zipper longer without making the zipper longer. And uh, so if you can, always buy your zipper longer than you need it to be so you can chop it off much easier than trying to make a zipper longer. But if you've ever wanted to make a zipper longer, well, in that video, I show you how to do that. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button, especially after the live is over with. Also, we are going to do something pretty exciting. At the end of the year, I'm going to give away a sewing machine. So if you want to enter to have a chance to win the sewing machine, go to creativefeet.com and sign up for our newsletter and also join the school and I'm going to announce how to enter the drawing soon. If you have not been getting notifications in the, in the school, go back into the school, sign up or sign in and look for your little circle up on the screen. Click on it and go to notifications and make sure you have your notifications turned on and, and know what email address you signed up for or using for the school. It is best to just choose one email address for me. Use the same email address you use for YouTube. If you use the same email address for YouTube at creativefeet.com and create with Claire Rowley the school and my, and my YouTube channel, well, your brain doesn't have to think as much. And if you do that also on the Zoom, well, now you, you have one email address, so much easier, more relaxing. Make sure that you have not turned off on your cell phone your notifications. And, and I, I'm personally a person that is quiet on my, I have my phone. It doesn't make any noise except for when I get a phone call. So all of the other types of notifications come in quiet on my phone. But if you want to make sure that you get messages from us, well, you want to make sure that you turn on text messaging in the school and put in your cell phone and it gives you an app to download to your phone so that you're notified whenever I announce something. So I'm going to be giving away an Eversown sewing machine at the end of this year. And uh, the value is about $600. I hope that one of you that really wants it gets it and uh, lots of other good things are coming so if you like this video go ahead and hit that like button if you have yet to subscribe to my youtube channel i sure hope you'll do so today and don't forget to join create.clairerowley.com is my free online school and inside of it there is free content and there are also paid classes and courses and my VIP group, which is where this video and the pattern will be given to them as part of the membership as soon as I'm done editing it, as soon as I'm done sewing it. And I'm going to actually leave you now and I'm going to, I'm going to keep sewing. So I hope that you have a wonderful evening. Enjoy your dinners. Or if you're just waking up, have a wonderful day. Thank you all for watching. Love you. Bye.